Hey guys, welcome to North Fish. We're gonna do our first Taco Tuesday review on the lipless crankbaits. I'm Kevin. Patrick. And, oh, uh, let's get into it. So, you wanna throw the lipless crankbaits in winter, late fall, even the spring I like throwing it. I find it's not quite as productive in the summer, but three seasons, it's, it's a good date. And I'll hook myself. <laughs> yeah. So a couple way to retrieve this bait is let it fall to the bottom, sort of a grass bed or hard rock bottom bed, and you're sort of like ripping it out and then it fall to the bottom and then doing that again until, you know, the fish will only take it on the fall. Another way to retrieve it is sort of just a steady retrieve from the boat and you gotta throw in a couple of jerks halfway through. Another really good thing about the lipless crankbait is you can cover a lot of water in little time. So obviously it's a good search bait. You know, you've come to a lake and you don't know where they are. You know, you can throw this around for a bit and you can get a decent idea of where those fish are sitting. The weights I use for lipless crankbaits range between quarter ounce to half ounce. Uh, I'll use a half ounce if it's sort of deeper water or I'm trying to get down deeper faster. I use a quarter ounce if it's a little shallower. So there's four main colors that I like to throw. And it all depends on what you see those bass feeding on. You know, sometimes, especially on the hard bottoms, you wanna throw something like a craw pattern. See that, it's gonna focus. Put it over my face. All right, it's kinda of focused there. So you wanna throw a craw, obviously, if they're feeding on the craws. If there's not a big crawfish population in the lake, one of my go-tos is a shad pattern. So the shad pattern is really productive when obviously they're hitting and feeding on schooling shad up in the shallows, so maybe late in the fall. It's a really good bait. And one of the last one is a chrome. Chrome's pretty good when the water is a bit dirtier because it gives off a bit more reflection. As you can see, that's a Rapala crankbait, a bit different profile. Nice color on it though. And for you northern guys like us, we fish lakes where a lot of the bass are eating perch and sunfish, you might want to throw something like that. I think this is a fire tiger color? Fire tiger. Fire tiger color. Decent little color, imitates a perch or, or a sunfish. Oh, for rod and reels, throw it on. I personally like to throw it on a seven foot medium. Okay, that's focused. Don't even show this box. Uh, obviously it's not focusing, but right now this one I've got a ducket ghost. Pretty nice rod, but if you guys want to see a review, I can do that later. And I've got on a 6 4 to 1 Johnny Morris Pro Carbon Light from Bass Pro. It's a good reel. If you want, I can do a review on that as well. The reason why you want a medium action rod is because they've got treble hooks, obviously, right? So if you have a medium heavy or even a heavy, you're going to rip that, that treble hook right out of its mouth. So you want a lot of play in the rod. Right, so you want it to have a good parabolic bend when you're fighting that fish. And in terms of hook sets, you want a nice swooping hook set. Same thing, right? You don't want to jack it out of the fish's mouth. You want a nice, easy, steady to the side. Now, in terms of line, I've got this on 14 pound fluorocarbon. Now you can uh, adjust the line depending on how deep you want it to run, making small adjustments. So if you want it to run a bit shallower, you can run it on 12 or even 8. Where are you going with this? I don't know, the pro seat. <laughs> you might have to cut that out. Yeah, there it is. Alright, thanks guys for tuning in for an episode of North Fish. Hope to see you.